talking about comparing methods for extractive summarization for call center dialogue um, based on some work done by myself and Dimitri Sitiev at Connects One. So I'll give a 20 minutes, I hope 22 minute talk. And of course, there'll be questions. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to write them in the chat, um, since I can't really um, stop, I guess. I won't see the chat chat box while I'm talking. Um, I'll take the questions post post talk. So um, I'm going to be in four parts of the talk. I'll start with a bit of introduction, um, giving a bit of context and background to the work. And I'll move into extractive summarization and overview of it and techniques that we explored. Now also, um, the main part of the work, the talk is about the work we've done, the two experiments we've done with these methods and techniques. And the final part to be just a few thoughts, um, what we're doing now and concluding thoughts based on the previous experiments. So, Connects One essentially is a company that, a software company that, um, facilitates omni-channel um, uh, interactions between the customer and the, and the business, which means um, it handles the, the calls, the audio calls, the email conversations, the, the WhatsApp conversation to text. It gives facilities and analytics to it to make these things um, smooth, as, smooth as possible. For this project, what we're trying to do is post-call, given the audio recording of the call, develop a system that captures important details like the customer's reason for the call, as the RFC, the customer's concerns, the agent's handling of the call, the final call resolution, action items to be handled post-call. And otherwise, what we want to do is summarize the call. Why would we want to do something like this? Um, so it, for one thing, it can help agents um, in post-call note making. So agents are supposed to make notes after the call, and this could be an alternative way of doing it. It can magnify the customer's voice because even human agents miss things, but by using doing this automatically using a, an algorithm, most things, things are not missed subjectively. And also enable managers, managers to quickly assess agent performance um, because rather than listening to all the calls, they can just read the summary of the call and then assess the agent performance. It can also help inform business decisions because um, now when you know what the customer is saying and what their concerns are beyond just what they want at the moment, you can um, better address long-term um, business needs. So we've come up with a, a call summarization pipeline. So given the audio call, we pass it to a speech recognizer to get a transcript. Then you pass that through an Austrian segmenter to get the call document, which is essentially a, a list of sentences, or a doc document of sentences, which is then passed through the extractive summarizer to create the summary of the document. So we'll talk about the summarization now. So in NLP, Almost NLP techniques for summarization are text based. The state of the art ones are text based anyway. So you have the abstractive summarization and the extractive summarization. For the abstractive ones, you have a document, you pass it through a summarizer. It's assuming it's a black model, and you have a new sentence, new sentences, so a paraphrase of the original document. For the extractive one, you have the original document passed through a summarizer, and out comes a subset of the original document. So the same sentences that were in the document, but only a few of them. And you can see that in this example here is a small example, a bit of a story. And you have the um, original document and you have of sentences. You have the obstructive summary, which is essentially new sentences rephrasing what happened in the original story. And you have the extractive summary, which is a subset. So you have sentence one, sentence three, sentence four, sentence 10 from the original forming the extractive summary. And so why would we want to do this again? Why would we choose extractive summarization for our, type, for our purposes? Because we did. Um, for one thing, the, a lot of extractive models are not deep learning based. So they are light with models, um, occupy a small space in memory and easily, are easily deployable because of that in production. So for production, we need light with models. So that's a plus. We also need models that don't require further fine tuning or training because um, as we all know, a labeling task for machine learning is an outdoors task. It takes time as well. And we didn't have that time at the point. So we wanted to get something quick and going really quickly. So this models a further opportunity. We also wanted high fidelity. If you look at this example, um, you can see that some subjectivity came into play. People, um, the paraphrase of an obstructive summary can also cannot, can be um, less subjective than the original document. You can misquote. 
especially given the state of the art for AI right now for abstractive summary, it's not it's not always factually correct. And we wanted factually correct summaries, even if they, even if they were incomplete, they had to be factually correct. So that's why we chose this um, technique, uh, this approach, summarization. So we have there are different kinds of extracted summarizers. There are the rule-based ones, there are the supervised ones, there are the semi-supervised and unsupervised. But they all have something in common. So essentially you get the document, you pre-process the sentences in a certain way, you compute sentence importance for each sentence, and then you select a subset of the document. This sentence is based on sentence importance. And different methods handle these um, steps in different ways. And the methods can be grouped together based on sentence importance. How are they handle sentence importance function? So largely we've grouped them together in four different categories. So you have the keyword based approaches where sentence importance is a function of word importance. You have the clustering based approaches where sentence importance is um, a function of the clustering um, of the document. We have graph based approaches where the sentences, there's a notion of recommendation, just like you have in um, Google and PageRank, you have a notion of recommendation. So the most recommended sentences are the important sentences. And you have the feature-based approaches um, where sentence importance is either lend or learn, but somehow is, you have to extract features from the sentence, then use that to decide what is important or not. And the ones you highlighted here in bold are the ones we selected, and we'll talk about them in the next few slides. So lead N is a simple baseline um, that's popular summarization. So basically what it does, you, after, after you process the, the document um, you know, by tokenization, case summarization and so on, you basically select the first um, N sentences as the document summary. So basically sentence importance is a function of document order. And we've set N for N or K for our purposes as, as seven. So we select the first seven sentences as the, as the summary. TF-IDF sum is also a very intuitive um, um, model. So essentially, rather than compute, rather than the word importance here, sentence importance is a function of word importance. So a word is important if it has a, a high TF-IDF score. And then sentence importance is the sum of the TF-IDF scores of all the words in the sentence. Um, so then you select again the first case sentences, the highest case sentences as the summary and reorder them in the order of appearance to make a coherent summary. Well, topic, sum, topic sum is a bit of an extension to that. So rather than just use the TF-IDF of the word as word importance, you're here you're using, um, you first of all, you apply a topic model over the corpus, and then you assign um, scores. I mean, each topic, if you have 10 topics, for example, they all assign scores to the words in the document. So a word is only as important as the scores assigned to it by all the topics. So by computing word importance, you can then um, extend it to compute sentence importance as a sum of word importance again, as you did in the TF-IDF method. And you select sentences the same way, select the most important ones as the, um, the summary. For KL sum, uh, the sentence importance is a bit, uh, is, is, a, is computed basically. So you have an ongoing summary. So you only, at each point, if you want K sentences, at each point you select the sentence that minimizes the KL divergence between the summary that is being created and the document itself. So you do this iteratively until you have the number of sentences you want. So that's how the KL sum works for summarization. So you have the bet sum, which is essentially to encode the document um, using bet with a few steps in between. And then cluster this document if you want k if you want um, k um, a k sentence, a k length summary, you cluster the document into k um, clusters. Then you pick the, the, the centroid sentence, the sentence closest to the centroid as the cluster summary. And then all the cluster summaries together form the document summary. And that's how that one works. Another model, this one is graph-based. Um, so you, essentially what it, what it means is that you, you compute a similarity matrix for the document. So by computing the similarity between each sentence and every other sentence in the, in the document and similarity for them in the paper was as a function of the number of words. So how many words overlap between the sentences? So you can imagine that the sentences with more words and more commonly used words have a higher um, similarity to other sentences. And then apply a dampening factor over the similarity matrix. And then the final score you get is the recommendation. So sentences that are more similar to other sentences seem to have, um, will have, tend to have a higher um, important score. And then you select the key most important sentences again, reorder them in the order of appearance in transcript. 
to form the um, document summary. RBM SOM is a stochastic model. So you, um, and according to our, our taxonomy, it's a feature-based model. So given a document and list of sentences, you extract features from these sentences, including sentence position, part of speech, whether or not there's a named entity, how many named entities it has, what is the first sentence in the, in the document, things like that. And you enhance them using an RBM, a restricted Boltzmann machine, and then pick the, the sentence with the highest feature sum as the beginning of the summary, and then use the similarity to iteratively increase the, the summary length. And that's how you, um, that's how this one works. So these are the models we picked essentially. Um, pick them because they are lightweight, pick them because they don't require further training. We pick them because they had um, sort of the art results in, 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 in the, for the task they were um, proposed for. And we thought they would be good models for the, our purposes. So what we did essentially is then um, two different experiments, objective um, evaluation of these models and subjective evaluation. For the objective evaluation, we took 29 calls from two domains. The um, number of calls selected were lim was limited based on um, how much, how many goal summaries we could create as quickly as possible. Um, speed was of the essence, of course, for the industry work. Um, so what we had then, we um, took the sentences, we created goal summaries for them for the first um, experiment. And we used eight calls from five different domains. In this second experiment, the number of calls was limited by the attained time of the experiment. So we wanted the participants to only have two hours for the task, as we'll see later on. So we picked eight calls from five domains to get diversity and at the same time also um, not take up too much time for the participants. So for the first experiment, just the objective evaluation of selected techniques, what we have is, um, so essentially you, you transcribe the call to get um, the call transcript from the audio recording. We, here we used a manual transcriber but of course, in production, we use automatic um, speech recognition. We wanted to make sure that the techniques were being tested more than the, the, the skillfulness of the, um, sorry, the quality of the, of the speech recognition system. So to keep that um, stable, we use a manual transcriber to make this experiment. So then you um, convert the transcripts into call documents um, using these steps. Then for each of the documents, you've, the 29 documents you have, you run the extractive models over these documents, and then we evaluate them with the summaries produced with respect to the goal summary using Rogue L. Rogue L is a, is a very common function um, for um, common metric, I guess, for um, summarization evaluation in the, in, the, in, the, in the field. What it does essentially, it is a function of how the, the long, longest common subsequence. So um, how many engrams are in common between the summary and the um and the gold so that's how rug l works so the the sentences the um the models that have the the longest common subsequences um produced have higher rug l scores so these are the results of this stage so you see that um the best models for this task are the the text rank and topic sum unsurprisingly because text rank has been shown in literature to be quite competitive but we'll see a downside to that later lead n though very simple is also very competitive and of course you can imagine that it's because we pick the first few sentences in the call document as a summary and these sentences tend to always capture the reason for the call which the gold always wants, also, also wants to capture so that's a, a good plus for the lead n topic sum and spaces sum are also competitive with text rank and surprisingly lead n are performed even text rank for one of the domains the mobile phone domain because, because most of the time the, the customer or agent states the reason for the call, states the important parts in the beginning, then everything else is just detailed until they get to the end. And what you see here is a graph that shows the correlation of word count and F1 score, Rogue L F1 score. So Rogue L, like we talked about, tends to favor uh, models that have longer um, subsequences and also based on this um, graph, longer, um, more words. So the wordier a summary is, the more, the higher the, the rug L score for that summary. And what we found, we found that this is not really, um, this is not really uh, the, the, the ideal way to handle uh, summarization for our purposes, but you'll see, see why later. So why lead N captured the, the reason for the call? It missed the, the call resolution because of course it picks the sentences at the beginning of the call, ignoring the ones that later in the call. 
and text rank summaries are coherent and they are worthy, yes, but they lack in topic diversity because text rank is a similarity based approach. So it takes sentences that are similar to each other. While it makes for a good read, it doesn't really capture what we're talking about, all the details we want, the final details like the action, action items that I mentioned once in a call. Oh, yeah, I'll get you that phone. The one sentence in the call, but it's a very important sentence. But because text rank is about summary and about similarity, it fails to capture that, that, that particular utterance. Um, TFIDF sum and topic sum also had good results, as you see from, so from the objective evaluation, and they also had good readability, but they also failed to capture the, the, the finer details because they are very heavy on um, the, so the, it fails to capture the salient points of the call, but it does not capture the most the often repeated um, points of the call. KL sum had high diversity, but it, because of the way it was structured, it minimized, so it, it, because of the way it works, it tries to get as many, as much of the original document as possible, which means it has very high diversity, but it drifts across topics, unimportant topics usually. Bet sum and Arabian sum summaries were the most readable summaries. They read really well, but because they, they, were, they were too short. So um, apparently the way Arabian sum works, it seems to favor shorter sentences than longer ones. And, and the bet sum, so from the people testing step for bet sum, it tends to cut away before it even goes to the modeling part, cut, cut away two long sentences, and that's a disfavor to the model. So we selected four of these models, four because we didn't want to, and wanted to limit the, the experiment to, to only four, two hours. So we selected four models and eight tasks of about 15 minutes long. So select four models, um, run the four models on the eight documents. So the average duration of the experiment is two hours. We have eight annotators. And we use Label Studio to collect judgments based on how good the models. So you give a, you present the um, uh, a, a summary to the summary to the annotator and ask him how good it is on a scale of one to ten. Um, we did this without, of course, displaying the model names to avoid um, biasing the experiment. So just give it a give the an, an, a summary, ask him how good it is on a scale of one to ten, and then we, to collect the judgments together, we aggregate these scores across annotators and tasks for each model. And what you see again is that topic sum also um, stands out as a, as, as a top model for summarization. Lead N also not trailing far behind at all. So very simple baseline, but also performing really well, even according to the annotators. They really like the fact that they captured the reason for the call. And because it captured sentences that are, um, so sequential sentences, it read really well. It was not complete, but it, it made coherent sense reading a lead N summary. Topic sum had the same effect. But, um, but the coherence came from the fact that it, it, it picked words around the same topic, essentially. Bet sum, they liked it, but it was too short. RBM sum, they liked the diversity of the, of the, of the summaries for RBM sum. So you have topic sum, lead and RBM sum before bet sum, even though it's a newer model from 2019. So what do we get out of this? Um, so essentially what we found and was, was good for us is that even simple baselines work. So this task is not, um, is not too far-fetched. It can be done even with simple baselines. Um, the second thing we found out that is that for, for um, both the, the, more, the, the objective evaluation score and the subjective one seem to be about the same, about 50% acceptability. It's not high, but it does seem that the, the models, um, the rogue L is somewhat consistent with how the human beings view the um, summaries as well, which is in accordance with what literature says about this. The models fail to capture very salient items like action items, customers' concerns, or agent handling, but at least they were good enough to capture the reason for the call and call outcome, and that has its uses. Um, but it doesn't cover everything we want, but the, it does have its uses. So what we're doing now essentially is that um, given how we found out that um, um, models like BET, BET SOM and RBM SOM, that's the set of the art models, are disadvantaged when we fix sentence length. So, okay, maybe we should try something different. Rather than fixing sentence length, we could fix word count so that these summaries can keep producing as many um, sentences that they need to to fill up the word count. That way, at least the rogue L evaluation would not um, disadvantage them so much. So we can, can be able to tell exactly um, what, what the problem is from, this, from these models. But what we're really focusing on now is something we call um, targeted summarization which is where we try to directly extract the important information. So rather than trying to summarize the call in its entirety, we classify each utterance in the call 
as an, as an ROFC, as a reason for the call, as the call outcome, as an action item, whatever it is, then using all this, um, so given this classified classification models, then we don't select. So if a particular utterance is the reason for the call and it has a score of maybe 0 0.8 as reason for call, we select it as part of the summary and then put the summary together in the end. So it's extractive in the end, it's extractive summary, but it's more ta targeted. So basically reframing the task as a classification task. Um, that's what we're working on now. But we may end up in the end training extractive models, but that's a long-term goal. Right now, we want something that works for the customer and can be um, useful in the short term. We're also experimenting with query-based summarization. So rather than trying to summarize the document in its entirety, build a model that when asked a question about the call can simply answer it. So tell me the reason for the call, or like a question, question answering um, extractor, basically. So these are things we're working on at the moment. Thank you for listening.